Hey, everybody. Welcome into The Shed. I'm really excited to bring you an interview with Caroline Fitchett. She's the executive director of the Salmonberry Trail Foundation. They are working to establish and realize this dream of an 82-mile long trail between Tillamook on the Oregon coast all the way to Banks in Washington County. I don't want to give any more spoilers because Caroline does such a great job describing why this project is important and why you should pay attention to it, care about it, uh, advocate for it, and maybe even get involved with it. So let's just get right into the interview. Thank you for uh, being willing to talk to me about the Salmonberry Trail Project. Introduce yourself and tell us what you've, what you've been doing with the project. And then after that, I'll have you introduce us to the Salmonberry Trail. Thanks so much for having me on the show. My name is Caroline Fitchett, and I have been at the Salmonberry Trail for about a year. And I would say um, really for the f past year at the Salmonberry my work has been a lot of internal work inside the organization, working with the board, um, fundraising, building up our volunteer base, which we continue to do, and doing a lot of relationship building the first year. And for folks that haven't heard about it, which I'm going to assume is some, some people listening and watching out there, what is the Salmonberry Trail? The Salmonberry Trail is Oregon's next big adventure. It's it's pretty amazing. It is likely the most difficult and most ambitious rail to trail project in the nation. The Salmonberry is an old railroad in Oregon that was built in the early 1900s that connected was the first railroad connecting Washington County with the Oregon coast. And folks utilized that uh, railroad. It really opened up the timber industry, also the dairy industry and tourism on, on the coast in Tillamook County. And through a series of pretty heavy storms in the late 1990s and early 2000s, the decision was not to reactivate the railroad once it was destroyed by the storms. And it has now become a rail to trail project and will connect the valley and the Portland metro area to the coast with an 82 mile trail. 82 miles. 82 wow. miles. So how did the Salmonberry actually come about? How did it originate as a project to begin with? So interesting enough, as a lot of us live on the west, you know, or eastern side in Washington County or the Portland metro area, and the idea really started in Tillamook. After all the storms and once the railroad made the decision that they were not going to spend the millions of dollars it would take to repair the railroad, there was a mom and a dad in Tillamook who had, you know, they had kids and they uh, constantly talked about how there was no safe place for them to take their children to ride bikes, to learn to ride a bike or to walk safely in the community of Tillamook and along the coast. And so uh, this young mom went to the county commission and gathered a couple of her other moms and dads that were friends. And they petitioned uh, the port and the county to think about turning the railroad into a rail to trail. And slowly that gained traction with government officials, both local and the state parks and state forestry. And with more helping hands from government and more moms and dads, um, there was a process that went through to uh, turn that into uh, actually get the railroad banked as a trail through the rails to trail process. So it really came from just a handful of moms and dads. Thank goodness for those moms wow, that, and dads. Yeah, that's such a fascinating story. Yes. And so to, to help folks uh, conceptualize, of course, I can share a map and stuff, but for folks mm -hmm. in their head, if they're thinking the starting point is Banks, right? So I think everybody, a lot of people might know about the banks Vernonia Trail, where that trailhead is mm -hmm. in Banks. Is that, mm -hmm. that's generally around kind of where the Salmonberry alignment starts or give it, us well, an idea of what the route is? I think is it out. depends on where you live. If you live in Tillamook, then oh, the course. Salmonberry Sorry. Trail is going to start in <laughs> Tillamook for you. Of course, And your destination. And maybe banks. Yes. If you live in the Portland area, then the starting point likely will be uh, banks or somewhere around banks. And yes, the Banks Vernonia Trail parallels the most eastern side mm -hmm. or section of the Salmonberry Trail. Starts in banks in the valley. So you're going through farmland and then you go up the steep mountainside into the Tillamook Forest where you see different iterations of the Tillamook Forest. And then it drops down into one of Oregon's steepest canyons, which is the Salmonberry Canyon. And it follows this very wild river, the Salmonberry River, which is very pristine, 
um, until you get to the confluence, you begin getting into the coastal range and you come to the confluence of the Nehalem River and the Salmonberry River. And here it really opens up. You're in right this very dense forest in the canyon, but once you get to the confluence, uh, Generally, there's sunshine if you're on a sunny day, but the river is very wide there at the Nehalem River, and it follows alongside the Nehalem River all the way into Nehalem Bay, right there at Wheeler, the town of Wheeler. And there it takes a, a, a southern turn, and you follow the Oregon shore, really, through the many towns across the coast between Wheeler and the community of Tillamook. Oh, I can't wait to get out there. Can people get on any part of it yet? No. Where are you at? Where are you at in nope. terms of the planning? Okay, they can't. Okay, so let's let's talk about the public and how you get onto the trail. Yeah. So the trail, the Sandberry Trail, is not open to the public. Not any of the eighty-two miles. So um, if you go out there, you are definitely trespassing, and we are asking folks not to trespass. However, if you become engaged with the Salmonberry Trail Foundation, and I'm sure you can put up a link somewhere to the website, salmonberrytrail.org, um, then you can access the trail and go on certain segments of the trail, either with staff or other volunteer leaders. We do both guided hikes in Washington County, and then we're working with the Tillamook County Wellness Council to do healthy hikes on the trail at the coast that would be guided. And then we also have a series of volunteer programs uh, that folks can get involved in, and I'm happy to talk about those as well. But those are the only ways to get on the trail. I know there were years and years and years and years of planning and meetings and talking about <laughs> it. And then it was only a few years ago, right, that people actually got to do trail projects. And I feel mm -hmm. like now you've started in earnest actually getting your hands dirty. And uh, there was a project recently where you ripped out the old railroad ties and cleared back a bunch of brush. So that sounds really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I just I hear what you're saying about not wanting people to go on there, especially as these rails have gotten dug up. It may look more accessible now, but it's definitely not. You've uh, separated it out into like four different sections, right? And you're doing uh, planning processes for each one. And I believe there's two left that haven't been updated. And it sounded like you're sending in scouting troops to go into those sections and document <laughs> yeah. what's changed. I just, I had this image in my head of just like Indiana Jones, you know, going deep into the coast range and, you know, documenting w where the trail might go and what needs to be in the master plan. So can you share a little bit about that work that's happening on those, those two plan updates? I sure can. So, um, and the, the plan updates are really for the entire trail because they did the segment plans for each segment of the trail. And now, as you say, it's been years. So we actually have to get boots and eyes on the ground to see what does it look like now? What are the conditions of the bridges and the trestles and the tunnels? What are the conditions of the culverts? There are hundreds of culverts that need to be identified um, documented and repaired or replaced, how, and then figuring out how we do this. And it is a little bit of Indiana Jones, and we do have an official scout team, <laughs> um, and that is their job to go in, investigate, and document. You can be a part of that too, Jonathan, if you'd like. <laughs> That's it. Sounds like they'd have some really cool merch. Like, I want the Salmonberry Trail Scout Team, like, I don't know, hat or something. It just <laughs> sounds really fun. So, yeah. can you give sense, give people a sense of what sections might open first or where it's most likely that a section will develop and give people a sense of like how that opening will happen eventually. You bet. So I'm going to talk about two sections. One is on the coast and one is on the western side. On the coastal side, uh, we are working with the city of Rockaway Beach. So they successfully applied for a few years ago a grant with the Oregon Department of Transportation, a community pass grant. They received it and they are plan they're doing the planning phase for Rockaway. And we are actually working right now with Tillamook County on this segment to apply for a raise grant, which is a federal transportation grant. And we can apply for up to $25 million to be able to finish that segment in Rockaway, which is from the northern side of Rockaway, just north of the high school and the middle school. And it'll go all the way south to the Twin Rocks area where there's a big cedar uh, park there. And if you haven't gone to that park, it's a great park to go to. So it'll connect those two spots up. So if we receive that grant and folks can help by emailing their congressional representatives to please support the Sam and Barry Raise grant. Um, if we receive that grant, that could be completed in anywhere from five to 10 years. 
you know, it's government, so it just depends on how sure. fast we can get the money and get it spent. And that will be the first segment completed on the coast. On the western side, we're looking at between banks and the what we call the Williams uh, Creek um, tr trussle. And mm -hmm. Williams Creek is a small creek that goes through Stubb Stewart State Parks. Yeah, you're familiar with it? I, I just know it well. I've camped next to it and I've been out to the the Buxton farm where I think the Williams Creek runs right in there in the backyard essentially or the back border of it there. So yes, very fond of Williams Creek. Yes, yes. So this section um, would be completed. It could potentially be completed in the next couple of years. It depends on money. It depends on permitting. So there's lots of items we have to move through. And to be clear, the Salmonberry will be uh, have some dirt sections and some paved sections, right? Well, the plan calls for that um, paved sections in the future, the master okay. plan. I However, uh, re-looking at it, at the plans, we tried to ask ourselves the question, how can we build this trail safely, quickly, so that we can open it and folks, the, as many people as possible, types of uses can use it. And we are crafting right now with our partners at the counties and the state level and what's called a minimum trail standards to say, at the minimum, you must meet these standards when you're building a segment of the Salmonberry Trail. And that will allow us to have some segments, as you say, may just be the rail bed. So it might, it might be, uh, you know, just the rock and you're hiking for a little while. Not really great for biking, may not be great for horses. Some might have uh, crushed, crushed gravel and eventually uh, concrete and the, or asphalt. And the intention is that the trail will be accessible to horses, to bicyclists, uh, and to walkers. And non-motorized transportation, basically. Right. I, I find some of these large trail projects sort of hard to conceptualize sometimes just by nature of, well, I haven't been to all the places and just the sheer scope and magnitude of this, of a trail project like this. So is there a, a trail project that's happened in Oregon that you think is analogous that might help people understand this? I was thinking before, before I came on to talk to you that it sort of reminded me of how ODOT is approaching the Columbia River State Highway, you know, the historic highway state trail, not not in the sense that there's going to be parts that are open to cars and stuff, but in the sense that it was this massive vision of 72 miles or whatever, and they're just taking it like piece by piece. Is that sort of similar how you're approaching the Salmonberry from like an implementation and development uh, standpoint? Uh, yes and no. Yes, in that we are approaching it piece by piece. Um, so in that, in that, state yes and um no in, in the sense that it's not what's unique about the salmonberry is that it is it is not being guided by one institution um so it was really created uniquely to have an intergovernmental agency mm -hmm. so that all parties had to be involved and come to consensus on how and what we build. And the foundation is sort of the driver to make sure things are moving through that intergovernmental agency, which basically means that it's the communities around the trail and the communities who want to utilize the trail that are uh, helping us drive the bus and figure out what segments we do and, and how, we, how we get um, the trail built and then open. Okay, that, that sounds interesting, but I also, when you say that, I just think, boy, that's a lot of cooks in the kitchen and a lot of uh, process and meetings and <laughs> coming to agreements, which we know on these projects, or um, there is some of a history in Oregon of opposition coming up. You know, there was this thing out mm -hmm. in uh, out, out in Washington County with the Yamhellas West Sider Trail where it kind of just fizzled out and there was this whole board of commissions that opposed it and it got really nasty. So I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, how do we prevent that from happening? And sort of like a second part of that question is, when you go to community meetings to talk about the Salmonberry, how do you frame the project? How, how do you introduce it to people for the first time? How do you talk about it? So I really let them talk about it. We yeah. listen is what we do, because most folks who live along the trail have been hearing about the Salmonberry for years. So they have known it's coming and their opinions maybe haven't changed. And we've seen this also with other trails that are built. The Banks for Nonia had the same experience. Um, and there was originally a lot of opposition. And over time, there now hasn't been. But for us in our process, 
Um, we listen. We also share information so that they know what our plans are and that they have a chance to ch change those plans. Like give us our, you know, your ideas or what have we, haven't we thought of that could impact you in a negative way or there are other things that we could do that could mitigate the impacts that you're scared of or that you don't want to see occur. And where we can, we'll make those changes. And part of that's called the, we're developing the Good Neighbor Program. Is the trail, yes, the purpose of the trail is to build the trail so people can use it. Um, and that includes folks that live along the trail and visitors. But in order to do it, the trail is also a neighbor. Like we are a neighbor to hundreds of people, to school districts, to watersheds, to the fish and the birds that are along the trail. And so we have to act um, and, and do the best we can to be a good neighbor and all, to, to all of our neighbors. And that's part of the good neighbor program that we are developing. But is, isn't it easier with the salmon berry just because I should never say anything's easy about the salmon berry, but because it's already right of way that is essentially set aside right i mean some of these other trail projects people you had to sort of mm -hmm. go and ask hopefully that someone could go behind someone's farmland or something like that so is that an advantage of this trail that that yes. rail right-of-way is already dedicated you just need to do your due diligence to listen and make sure that people don't call their congressperson and say or whoever is state lawmaker and say heck no, we're going to fight this thing, right? But at least the land's already sort of dedicated for it. Yes, actually in the last, uh, over the last 10 years, so that you're right, we have a huge uh, sort of uh, base under us of success in the fact that we have the land. Uh, so it's what they call, you know, land secured and ready to go. We've gone through the rail banking process. Uh, so it's been banked and we have a 99 year lease to utilize that land as a trail. So the only thing in our way is planning it appropriately, ensuring that uh, we're doing what we can to be good neighbors and raising the money to build it and figuring out how to maintain it. Yeah, and obviously lining up the politics and stuff to get to make sure that 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 there you can have attention for grants and other funding opportunities. And I saw over the summer you had a Congresswoman Su Suzanne Bonamici come into town, and did she go out actually go, to go out on the trail and took a hike? What was that like? She did. Yeah, she and her team, and we had a, a Washington County Commissioner and uh, some folks from the City of Banks, and she walked uh, what we are calling the Learning Mile, and this is a mile that we want to turn into an outdoor classroom for the local school districts as well, um, uh, that goes right there across Williams Creek at the base of the Williams Creek Trestle. And I would say um, she's was super excited and supported, uh, supporting of the Salmonberry Trail and her office, as well as um, Wyden and Merkley's office, will be coming out uh, to see the trail in the in the coming future as well. And we're really hopefully excited to have their strong support of the Raise Grant uh, once that's submitted in it later this month in February. Neat. I love hearing about the the learning mile and like the classroom idea. And I think. One thing I've, I've always thought of about the salmon berry is just how many different types of uses could be on this thing from folks taking a horse out in the middle of some, you know, far off mile post deep in the woods or whatever to people just maybe pedaling around outside of banks after they parked at the trailhead or from the coast, right? And just on a, on a lark, a tourist or something versus maybe somebody wants to go tackle 30 miles, 40 miles someday. So it seems like there's a lot of different ways people can get into this trail in the future once it's ready. There definitely will be. We are definitely excited for the future and welcome anyone who wants to join us as we uh, continue on our journey to build the trail because we uh, we need more help. And, you, and you're doing some guided hikes that folks can join you, right? This this spring coming up? I am, yes. In, well, there's about five or six in February and we'll probably add some more guided hikes in March and April. We also have a guided hike program if folks want to learn to be a um a hike guide then um we're going through and training folks so that there can be other people that are also guiding hikes and it's not just me and, and on those guided hikes people get a chance to get on the the future trail see what the progress has been like tell us what happens on those guided hikes you bet the guided hikes are anywhere from two miles to four or five miles 
And <clears throat> depending on the weather, we go to different areas of the trail. So you get to experience what the trail looks like today and have a vision of what, um, share with, our, with us the vision of that segment of trail in the future. Generally, we there's one or two volunteers that are heavily involved in our teams. So you might hear from a civil engineer that's working on the trestle team. You know, we have trestles that are over 130 feet high off the ground that have to be repaired and fixed. And then we have tunnels that are up to a quarter of a mile long that need to be mm. repaired. So there's there's just, yes, a lot of fascinating and interesting um, components of both building as well as the natural environment and the history along the trail that folks will learn. Okay. You mentioned tunnels and trestles. What do you, Caroline, have a section that like you would dream about walking through or what uh, your favorite section that you've seen or dreamt about so far? Um, let's see. I, for me, uh, it really is the Canyon section and I, um, have been on the Canyon section once with a few engineers. It's definitely, it's very, it's the most dangerous section and it has so much history from our, you know, the history of forestry in Oregon, both in the burns and then building up uh, our economy. There are ghost, you know, remnants of ghost towns in that area that are uh, long gone, uh, but certainly were a huge part of Oregon's history at, at once, once upon a time. So that would be my favorite fragment. And it's wild. So the scenic area and uh, viewing and the wildlife is a, uh, is, what I would call the wild heart of the Northwest Oregon coast range. <laughs> neat, neat. And that's kind of like the, the Canyon section is kind of like in, after you sort of start your ascent up into the coast range and go down before you start headed back out to the, to the coast, or is that kind of where that is? It is. It's kind of between okay. the river section and the, and the Valley. Ooh, that sounds really cool. Okay. Anything coming up with the salmonberry that folks should keep on their radar screen like this coming year or two? Uh, yeah, so uh, definitely what's the big part this spring is that we have the guided hikes happening, which you can find on our website. And then in April, we'll be having a, um, a friends event. So it'll be a big event where folks can learn about all the details of the salmonberry. And this summer, we will be having a lot of work parties. So if uh -huh. folks want to get dirty, that will happen uh, in the summer months. That's great. Okay. And I, I, I'm going to kick myself if I don't ask this, this final question. What do you say when people come to you and say, when's this thing going to open? <laughs> people say that all the time. Maybe know, you can help me why. figure out a good answer, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, fair. I don't fair know enough, a good but... answer. I okay. tend to say either between uh, 20 and 50 years for completion um, or as soon as I, we have raised the first $50 million, I will have a very clear answer for you. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. There we folks. go. So we got to help, we got to help move that curve up a little bit and, and get this thing open while we can, while we can all still enjoy it. So, um, okay, well, we'll share some links on how folks can stay connected and we'll get onto your website and stuff. And maybe you can recruit some volunteers to go out and rip out some brush and, and get the trail all ready to go. So thanks for coming in and talking about it, Caroline. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us here today. Really appreciate the work you do, Jonathan. Thanks. Thanks.